Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Adobe Live uh, and I'm here today with our good friend Ian Haig. Now we did a, uh, uh, another session on Tuesday and on Tuesday's session that was about After Effects and we, we did a couple of really cool things in there. We built a motion graphics template or a MoGit if you will. So if you want to have a, a look at that, um, uh, that session itself, I think we'll pop a, a link in the chat um, so that you can have a look at that if you haven't seen it already. Uh, my name is Chris Hansen. I'm a senior solutions consultant at Adobe in Sydney, Australia. So for wherever you are around the world, I'd like to say hello and welcome. Uh, it's great to have you here. Uh, but yes, today we have Ian Haig and he's going to take us through uh, a couple of things. I'm just checking my notes here. We're going to be looking at some uh, multicam sequencing. We're going to have a look at our motion graphics template from the previous episode and see how that transfers into Premiere Pro today. Uh, and then we're going to have a look at a couple of things in the Essential Sound panel. Um, but yeah, Ian, um, how are you? Welcome. Uh, good morning. Um, I'm well, thank you. Um, thanks for having me back. And hi to everyone who's joined us. If you've uh, come from last week, um, then welcome back from last Tuesday, in fact. And um, today, like Chris says, yeah, we're looking at some Premiere stuff. So we'll bring in the MoGit template that we made the other day and see how that works within Premiere. I've got some multicam bits and pieces, some tricks to share with you. And also uh, one thing that we didn't cover in last year's session when I was talking about Premiere is sound. And so we're gonna look at some of how you can use the essential sound panel to make your audio sound better. Also how to grab uh, Adobe stock music and drop that in and audio ducking, how to automate that process, which is the, effectively when the music goes quiet so that you can hear a speaker and then comes back up again when there's no audio. So it's an incredibly powerful and a very, very easy way to get your audio sounding amazing. And if there's time after all of that, then it would be great to look at the new transcription feature in the latest version of Premiere Pro as well. So there's quite a bit to get through. Mm. I'll, jump, I'll jump in. Yeah, the transcription feature is uh, is extremely powerful and I'm really excited that we've released that. So if we have some time, it'd be great to see it for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so um, here we are in uh, Premiere Pro. I've got a few clips that I've taken. You're going to have to forgive, uh, forgive me for using myself, but I thought that would be easier <laughs> than making someone else appear in this tutorial so these I ones thought we'd I have some food food ready to go Ian. i'm going <laughs> i'm going to see if i can drop some food references <laughs> in for you today but in this first of all we have um i'll show you just how to set up a multi-camera clip so multi-camera in case no one is uh, if anyone's unfamiliar <clears throat> with what that means is when you've shot the same thing with two different cameras now that gives you a lot more flexibility in editing because you can switch between cameras and hide edits. It also makes it visually more interesting as well because you don't necessarily have to look at one angle all the time. So multi-camera is very, very useful. You don't need fancy cameras or anything like that. You can do it with your phone. Um, and the important thing to, to know is how to synchronize those cameras. So in this instance, I used uh, two, two cameras which are quite similar. One was a Sony a7s on that angle and one was a sony a7s mark ii on a different angle so it's they were shot at this press record at roughly the same time and in order to get them synchronized i just clapped like this yeah and what i've done here is i went through and using the left and right keys i just basically waited until exactly the moment where they clapped and then I dropped a marker and you can see that green marker on the timeline. So I did that on one angle and then I did it on another angle here. 
And in this instance, I was using, uh, you can sort of see, if I go over here, you can see that it's an amusing uh, angle. So um, <laughs> there's a little, I was using an external microphone as well. So if you're using um, uh, an external microphone, then you also need to synchronize the uh, audio. So if I go into, by double clicking the audio file there, so there's no picture at all. If we zoom in a bit, you can see that there's actually, uh, it's, it's really clear where that it's, um, it's a little bit obscured by the mark at the moment. Oh, you yeah. can see that's, that's the clap. So if I, so we're looking that, at the, the waveform. Oh yeah. We're looking at the waveform here of the, the audio from the microphone. Yeah. So that's showing yeah. us, it's showing us what the actual kind of, that's me speaking. Yeah, um, there you go. and so because the, that clap is, uh, such a, it's it's a unique looking part of the of the audio, so it's very easy to sort of say, okay, that's where it is. So if I come in here, use my left and right keys until I get to the exactly the right place. You can also turn on uh, scr audio scrubbing as well, which I don't know where it is in the menu again, but it's Shift S. If I turn that on, and then I can when I go left and right, it'll play as I'm as I'm going left and right as well. Or as okay. you're dragging, as you're dragging the playhead around, you can. So once you've got it at exactly the right place, you drop your marker in. So now all three of these clips, that one's got a marker, the audio's got a marker, and this one's got a marker. And I was just dropping that in by pressing the M key, M for mm -hmm. marker. If I select all three of those now, shift click, and then I right click on it and go create multi-camera source sequence. Okay. In this instance, there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can synchronize these three clips so that they're all lined up perfectly. Um, we, if, if you're using a, a sophisticated camera arrangement, then you can have them automatically recording their own time code, which for a, a big production, if you're shooting a television commercial, for example, or a film, you might use something like that. Uh, sound time code is another way of doing that. In this instance, we want to use clip marker. If you didn't do your clap, then you can still synchronize them by using the audio of all three of them. Mm. And that way it'll look at the audio waveform for all of the clips that you're synchronizing and try and move them around so that the audio uh, syncs up perfectly. But in this instance, we've done, we've dropped in a marker so I can just say clip marker and I'll just leave everything else on the default. I was going to okay. ask you before you before you click OK. Yeah, yep. cool. Um, the audio instead of the clip marker, the audio bit that you just uh, mentioned in terms of synchronizing the audio up and it finds it as best as it could. Have you ever tried that approach? Is it is it fairly accurate? Yeah, it's it can be very accurate, um, mm -hmm. and that's often what I would use. And um, it particularly if you've got a ton of different clips it's it's yeah. incredibly convenient to just drag them all into your project select them all hit sync and just sync them by audio and let yeah, the computer yeah. do all of the hard work so that you just let it figure out all of the waveforms for you um it kind of depends on on what you're wanting to do i like doing it by clip marker using that clap or if you are on a yeah. um real production you use a, a clapper board one of those ones that goes yeah. at the top um and i like that just because i know that it's going to be really accurate mm. um but if but otherwise yeah audio is also a perfectly um legitimate way to put it together and, and either either works really well so as you can see there's a ton of different ways to do it yeah so once you've got everything all if your ducks in a row and you hit okay it only took two seconds because it didn't have to, um, well, less than one second, because it didn't have to look at the audio waveform and it's dropped a multi-camera uh, sequence into my um, into my bin here. So if I make a brand new, brand new timeline, I'll call it brand new timeline, like that. And if I drop that, this is the new one here, I'll put these other ones, I'm just going to drag them to the bin icon here just to get them out of the Create way. A new bin, yeah. Yep. And if I, so there's my brand new timeline. If I drop this one that's just been created onto the timeline, it does uh, appear as one. So there are three clips in here. So. Right, so it's kind of like it's nested them. It's like it's nested them. If I um, go into here and again, it's another one of those uh, 
moments where I don't know how to do it with the menus. Uh, I've got I've set up a keyboard shortcut, but if I open that sequence up, that nested sequence, oh, okay. you can see here all of those markers are lined up perfectly, and that's where I where I clap. So it's basically it's moved them all so that they're in sequence. It's auto, you'll notice it's automatically figured out that that's the main audio track yeah. because that was one by itself. So it's muted the audio that was on the camera. And if you, if I have a little zoom in on that, you can see that the audio waveform for the, um, for the external audio recorder is much, looks much healthier. It's got more information in there than these two cameras. So that's, mm -hmm. What you might run into uh, difficulty synchronizing by audio if one camera is quite far away or if it's a noisy environment. And that's where it can be really helpful to use that clap because then you get a visual representation mm. of, the, of the sync point as well as an oral uh, representation, if that makes sense. Yeah, so can I ask you, if you don't have two camera angles, let's just say you've, you've only shot with one camera and you've just and you've got audio from a microphone, can you could you still use the multicam uh, sequence the same way? And it all that or, is an excellent oh. question. Yeah, that's a brilliant question. So here's here's one way that you might want to do that. So in that instance, imagine that we didn't have this angle i'm just going to yeah. delete that completely so i've only got this profile angle and i happen to know that this uh the source footage here is shot in 4k and say we wanted to deliver it in a, at a lower resolution like a uh, 1080p timeline so mm -hmm. i'm going to change the sequence settings in here right click and go sequence settings yeah. i'll just make this into a 1920 by 1080 and again i must apologize for using this uh footage of myself it's really weird to now you've got yourself now. at a really good angle there i really like that very, you know, <laughs> prime ministerial <laughs> angle if, if you will <laughs> i appreciate yeah i appreciate that yeah i was going for something prime ministerial or presidential for our american we, yeah we could do yeah so what i've done here is i've just scaled that one down so i made the sequence small i've scaled it down to fit and now if i option drag i made a copy of that mm -hmm. and now i could zoom in on it say i'm going to make it 90 percent and now even though it's the same footage one of them is punched in one of them is at a higher resolution if you like so you could also have let's let's make another angle so that so, i've got so pretty much you're you're manipulating uh as if you have shot it on multi multi different cameras correct so you've got yeah. you've got like you can you, you're not confined to um, to using it in a traditional sense. You can mix it and match it however you like. So in this instance, I've just called up the Lumetri color panel here. So I've made, this is our base angle. This is the one that was scaled. And now I can make one that's scaled and put a, a grade on it. So I could, oh, yeah. I could make it, give it a, um, say one of these black and white ones like that. So now when I go back into the brand new timeline, I can, if I right click on that, or actually if I double click that, here are the three angles that we've set up manually. So there's the default punched in, punched in black and white. And then I mm. can switch between those just by, um, I can go control one, control two, control three. Okay. And that's gonna put in cuts between those, different, between those different angles in the timeline. Or I can just double click up here as well to, um, or no, I can't. Sorry, I just had to double click up there, and then now I can switch between them. So, like so wherever you're, are you saying wherever the playhead is on the timeline, when you double click up in the multi cam, yeah, up here, yeah. it'll it'll then select that camera for that. Correct. Shot. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's as long as you've got this little auto um, track targeting thing turned on. Yeah. So it'll automatically um, it'll choose if it's V1, then I can just double uh, double tap up here and it will ought to. Well, now it's not working. <laughs> okay. But yeah, effectively that that's the way that you do it. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. working now. So uh, yeah, I think it's. Um, I don't want to get too bogged down like that, but yeah, that's a, what you're saying is is right. But it was it's 
I double uh, clicked on that one and so you've got different angles that mm. you can choose from up there. But returning to the original question, this is one way. Oh, this is really unflattering, guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> but um, oh, it's even worse. Morning, oh, everyone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. you are. <laughs> Super embarrassing. So one thing that it's, it's worth knowing is that you can also yeah. do the same thing with your music which is one uh, trick that I want to come back to a little bit later on and show you how you can switch between different soundtracks using this technique as well. So the multi-camera um, technique or the, the technology that uh, is in Premiere is very powerful and you can get a little bit creative with it and use it in a way that you know perhaps um, you hadn't initially uh, thought was possible. Hmm. Oh, that's really that's, powerful. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's, uh, it's exciting. It's exciting and new. Um, so moving along to the, um, essential sound demo. So here's a hilarious, uh, and when I say hilarious, I mean kind of bad timeline that I have set up for you here, a contrived example. So <laughs> I've got, um, different angles here. I've just cut it together. I've put in some, um, transitions and we're using, here's our title from last week. So. This was the MoGurt that we created. Um, and just as a little recap, if I wanted to chuck a brand new one on there, I'd go to the Essential Graphics panel. Um, I called it, it was called Premium Demo. So if I search for demo, you can see this is the one that we created. And all so, I need to do is... So yep. yeah, so for those for those that tuned into our session two days ago, we created an After Effects uh, motion graphics template. This is what Ian is showing now. For those that haven't seen this, we obviously um, will have the link provided for the uh, first session. So yeah, if you haven't seen that, go ahead and check it out, but continue in. Check it out, yes. And <laughs> I've, made, I've made a couple of little um, improvements on it as well, so that now as it kind of um, it fades the, it's got, a, it's got an overlay at the back, which I can okay. choose how much I want that to. Um, we can edit the text in here. This is where I'm gonna bring in the fruit guys, banana. So you've got the motion graphics template selected on the timeline and that's showing you in the essential graphics what you have access to. There you go with your banana pancakes. Correct. Um, what, what you have access to that you were given from yep. After Effects. Yeah. Yeah. So you all of these properties are the ones that we made editable in After Effects um, using essential graphics and we added those as editable properties. We gave them labels so that they would make sense. Um, so that yep. when we change the, the settings on one, so I make that banana sort of colored ish, banana color sort of like, there we go, it's more lemony. Um, so that we can go around and make all of these changes. And you can even put comments in there as well. Thanks for using my template. <laughs> um, so there's a, there's a whole bunch of like power in the essential graphics panel. Um, mm. And also importantly, you can just drag the, um, change the duration of that and all of the animation a, uh, respects the, 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 the new duration as well. So you can just drag that out and it will still animate in and out correctly. So there's no, there's no like extra keyframing that needs to be done. It just honors that, um, the, the animation that's already pre-built into it. Exactly. And so that was yeah. when, we, um, when we had a look at that the other day. So just as a quick reminder, one of the really powerful things about Mogurts is that you can um, is that you can, can you can say I want um, we're back in After Effects now. This yeah. blue part up here in the time yeah. ruler is protected, and this part down here is protected as well. So that when you change the duration of your Mogurt on the Premiere timeline, these these two parts don't change in the duration. And so the animation stays at the same speed. It doesn't get compressed or stretched out. So it means that you've got a ton of flexibility whether you're using these Mogurts for yourself or whether you're giving them to someone else to use. Yeah, that's fantastic. Now, we've just had a question come through. How yeah. often would you create your own template in After Effects rather than using templates already in Premiere? I would almost always create my own templates and that's specifically because most of the time i'm doing work on a particular for a particular client or a particular brand and so mm -hmm. i need to adhere to their uh, brand guidelines and to their kind of corporate 
style if you like so yeah, whether that's you know their color palette or their visual language or their font um, and so then it's it's uh, quite straightforward for me to to whip something up um, and if you but if you're not doing that if you're doing something for yourself then there's a huge number of um, sort of built-in templates yeah and assets that you can uh, that you can grab from that essential graphics panel um now i've got a question you can build premiere motion graphics templates right you can build them in premiere i believe you're right but i have not yeah ever had, I've, i'm sort of i would use uh, after effects for that Purpose, yeah, but yeah, I think I think my you're right. question my question would be when would you use one or the other? And I think the answer to that would be you have a lot more access to animation and uh, other parameters and properties within After Effects that allows you to build more, you know, dynamic uh, motion graphics templates that you can then pr uh, pull through into Premiere. I think I think you're you're exactly right. So with mm. After Effects is is uh, from the ground up an animation environment. Yeah. So you've got real, a lot of control over, you know, with the uh, the curve editor, the, the graph editor. Yeah. You've got a whole bunch of um, effects and also expressions in there, so that you can wire it up however you like. Um, so I think you know if you were going to do something that were that didn't require all of that power and you're comfortable in the premier environment, then you could just stay there and achieve a lot of what you needed to do. But if you yeah. need that extra edge, then go into After Effects and and get pressing buttons. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so here we are. So we've basically we've had a look at this. Um, there's me sitting down and clapping. Contrived example. Uh, we've got some filters. We've got put a bit of a look on to, on there, and and so on. So this is our timeline, and you will see that we've got our audio down here. Um, this is me speaking, and the rest of it is no sound at all. Um, so what we'd want to do here is bring in some audio to make it a bit more appealing and uh, feel a bit more complete and watchable. And what I want to introduce you to here is the essential sound panel. Uh, there's a lot of power here in this little panel. So mm. first of all, um, let's have a look at how we can brighten up my audio. So nothing has um, been done to this yet. Uh, it's, it was recorded on a good device. And so the audio is already reasonably clean, but you can always you can always improve it, like with adjusting the, the levels of volume and so on, reducing background noise. So what I'll do, first of all, is select these three clips just by dragging over them. I'll go to the Edit uh, tab on the Essential Sound panel, which you can just find under Window up here if it's not already on. And right now, uh, if, before you've done anything, it'll look like this. So the first thing you need to do is assign a tag, and that helps mm -hmm. Premiere understand what type of audio it is and therefore what uh, you want to do with it. So in this instance, I'll just say it's dialogue and it comes up with a whole bunch of settings related to dialogue. Uh, and then I can choose a preset. So balanced male voice. I mean, I'd like to think that I'm a balanced male. Uh, choose that one. And it's already, you can see by the, the waveform in here, it's already sort of done a whole lot uh, to it. So, so their, I, preset, their preset dialogue um, yeah, pieces that you can just choose. Um, but then you can obviously get a little bit deeper, can you? Yeah, exactly. So if you're if you're in a bit of a hurry or you're not interested in, in sort of going any getting into it anymore, you can just choose a preset and that's mm -hmm. going to uh, do a whole bunch for you already. Or if I, I'm going to clear the audio type and just delete any of the audio settings that are on there, I will go set the dialogue type um, loudness is a really good one. If I just click auto match, then that's going to automatically bring up the, again, live demos. Amazing. <laughs> auto match. It's, uh, okay. It, it brings up the waveform to match them equally. Yeah, exactly. And so mm -hmm. what I, what might not be, uh, either, you know, it just took, just took my computer a second to think about it. So, okay. Um, I've just flattened those multi-camera clips into, um, which is, might make it slightly faster. But you can see the difference there is that um, before 
they they weren't this loud and so it's automatically um, made them uh, it's automatically given them the the right levels for audio so before and after if i play it now i also have this camera over here and then if i hit auto match and loudness and again compute my computers just taking a little second, I'll flatten that multi-camera sequence and press it one more time. While, while you're doing that, we've got a question yep. that's come through. Has yep. Ian ever done any editing on the phone or has it always been in After Effects and Premiere? I, I have done editing on the phone, yeah. Um, there's, uh, I can't remember what it's called. Adobe make a really great little um, portable phone editor, which is really powerful. You're I talking about Rush? Yeah, Rush. Premier, Premier Rush, Ru yeah. Premier Rush, yes, it's fantastic. Um, mm. And I've, I've used that uh, when I've just shot, when I've been away from my computer and I've just put together a little video and it's got a ton of, it's actually really intuitive to use and has yeah, a ton of um, features and, you know, built-ins as well. So built-in titles, built-in sort of music and so on. So you can actually set up a really great little um, edit from on the road or hotel room or wherever you are. Yeah, it's it's really good if, if you've got um, a tablet device, you you can do like I do like rough cuts on on that device using yeah. Rush, and then once I come to my desktop, I can actually open that uh, project in Premiere Pro from Rush, which is fantastic. Then I can do even further edits from there. But yeah, we digress. We're not talking about Rush today. <laughs> it's about Premiere. Yeah, but it's but it's a great it's a great question and, and something that is. very. Um, it's very handy to know, particularly that I, I hadn't thought to um, to get the sort of, uh, I mean, it's, it's well named as well, but to get the, the rushes have a rough cut in uh, mm. on, on your device, whether it's a tablet or a phone and then, and mm. then keep editing in Premiere for the, for the fine tune. Definitely. Um, okay, so here we go. I've, I've put the audio auto match on there for the loudness. And I also have this camera over here. So if you weren't getting enough of my voice before, you can hear it even louder now. And then you can also bring in here. So you've got like, if there was noise in the background, if there was a hum from an electrical frequency, for example, the essing, which is when um, certain voices and microphone setups will really emphasize that yeah. sound so you can turn mm -hmm. that on. There's so Premiere Premier can pick up those little intricacies yeah, you can you can do, do a lot from just right here within Premiere. So, and as you can see, it's, it's kind of all in one place. It's very um, easy to to see what you want, and yeah. it's really just like if you set up um, just so that you've got like a small segment. Um, and there, hold on, what and did then, you just what did you just do there? Because it looks like you've set an in and out point. Is that what you've done? Oh yeah. So so I moved this. Sorry, I, I, this is all kind of like. Um, automatic <laughs> so I, I move my um playhead over one of the clips and then i type the x key which just sets an in and out point over wow. one little um one little part and then and that means that means you can hone in on that particular clip right yeah yeah exa exactly so that then if i i can then just by typing um uh it's option uh forward slash no it's and option k i beg your pardon this camera option k here just plays and between the in and out point. This camera ah. over here. So if you were going to just keep testing, for example, and now I have to just see whether, uh, again, loop is not showing up there. Uh, sequence, playback. I think it's command option L, perhaps. I think loop's and in I also your program have monitor. This camera over here. Yeah, it's on the program monitor, isn't it? Yeah. Um, should be in there somewhere. If I, unless I've already sort of messed with it. Is that their loop playback? Yeah, it is, yeah. So I'll drop that down there and then turn on loop yeah. and hit option K and now it's just going to play. And I also play. have this camera over here. And I also so have when that's selected, this camera over here. And I also I can have play around with this it. camera over here. And I also in have real time in this camera over here. And I also have... I'll, I'll, I'll stop subjecting you to that, but you can like set up loop, set up just a small segment, keep it playing, and then fiddle around with the settings over here and, and get it sounding exactly how you like. So there's a lot going on over here and the essential sound. And so that's let's just say, one of the let's tabs. Say, I was just going to ask There's you. a whole other tab. 
I was just going to ask you, so let's say you, you're happy with, you know, the, the edits and the adjustments you've made on that particular clip. Yep. How then do I get it to go on other pieces of audio? Uh, another great question. So if, if I um, select that clip and mm -hmm. hit copy or go make it really visual, copy there, mm -hmm. and now I select these clips, I'm holding down... Um, Looks like I don't need to, but if, if it was selecting both of those, if those were linked like that, I can just hold the, down the option key or the alt key on Windows and it'll only select um, the audio, not the video as well. Ah, so you don't even have to unlink them? No, just hold down the option or alt yeah. key and, hand, and, yeah. and then drag over or, or, shift, uh, or command click mm -hmm. or control click. So. If I now um, going to go paste attributes, which if I'm not mistaken is here, paste attributes. So first of all, I'll go remove attributes, make sure that, so it's already got some um, oh, that's yeah. from the essential sound. Get rid of that. So we're setting it back to zero. I'll go edit, paste attributes, and we've got everything turned on. All of my fiddling around is in from there. From the first clip, which is from great. From the first yeah. clip, hit yeah. okay. And now if I, so before and after, if I go undo, you can see it's yeah. brought in these um, these additional filters, and you can you can see when the little FX uh, when that changes color, then it's, it's so it. when it's yeah when it's yellow, there's nothing on it, and when it's green, mm. it's got filters put on it. So we can see that those all should sound identical now. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really handy. So now that I sound. Fabulous. Uh, I'm going to go to the Essential Sound panel and we'll go back to the other tab, Browse. Mm -hmm. And we've got Adobe Stock up here. So there's a whole lot of music that we can use in our project. Um, if I, let's start with corporate uplifting, who doesn't love a bit of corporate uplifting? Um, if I, right now, if I just click on it. When you're creating. Now, it started playing from uh, where I clicked it. So right now, timeline sync at the bottom down here is on. So from the, the point where I placed the, the playhead, I can click into the timeline and it's going to synchronize up with. And you can watch in real time your video at the same time as the music you're trying to choose. Exactly. So yeah. if I was like, okay, corporate uplifting, I'm not feeling so corporate <laughs> today. I go into moods, I can choose angry. <laughs> I'm not feeling oh. angry, but uh, let's just say, for instance, we wanted to try that out. And so then it's just a matter of clicking. We can just click. And I also have ooh, yeah. this camera over here. Ooh. That's working. I'm feeling it. Yeah, yeah. My best uh, interview ever because my... that's quite dramatic. So yeah, why don't is. we use that? <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to drag. Action, action industrial hybrid trailer. Okay. And I'm just going to drag it straight onto my timeline. And have a, have a look some... at what's in there. Scary, dramatic, electronic, film, rock. <laughs> I'm feeling all of those emotions. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah, we've got it all. Industrial and film. So there's, there's obviously there's a ton of stuff. All right, yeah. And just, just as a little um, aside, if you, I just expanded that whole panel. Um, I've made the, my screen quite low resolution just for the purposes of this demonstration. If you are on a small screen or if you need a little bit more real estate for a panel, then just hover over the, the panel in question with your cursor and hit the back tick, which is uh, on my keyboard, it's just under the escape key top left. So back tick, just that oh, little- Is that the tilde? Is it yeah. called the tilde one, the little curve? Yeah. Yeah, it's got it's got it's the same key. So there's a tilde and then underneath it is the back tick. Back tick. And then okay. if you yeah. And by hovering over different panels, you can expand that. So incredibly nice. handy, particularly if you're working on a timeline with tons of video layers, tons of audio layers, and you need a bit more real estate to be able to um, punch in on it. Okay. So here we are, we've got our action industrial hybrid trailer <laughs> music. I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna crop it to the end here. So I'll just hovering over there with my timeline in the right place. I'm gonna press the W key, which is just gonna trim the end of that. 
And then when I play it back, I'm like, actually, timed quite nicely to that clap. Uh, yeah, no, you could see that. He, he did that intentionally, of course. <laughs> it's all planned, nothing is left to chance. Um, and when I keep playing, and I also have this camera over here. So currently, the music which sounds amazing and is giving this little film snippet exactly the tension, the high stakes tension that it needs. Um, but what would be great is if the volume ducked down when I started talking. So in the, in the olden days, the, uh, there were a couple of ways of doing it. One way that I liked doing it was just to put cuts into the uh, music and then um, bring down the volume like that and then uh, put in transitions between them. So we're going to do it like this. And I also have this camera over here. But that is very manual. And the longer the timeline and the more of those that you need to put in, the uh, more painful that is, particularly when you start making edits. So if I hit undo, 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 mm. and we get back to where we were, now we have the essential sound ducking. So we go back to the edit tab, and so I'm going to assign a music tag while this is... Selected. Now I'm just, just going to say, yeah. the previous the previous ways of that you just showed of doing that. If if changes are made throughout the video, you know, in the in, in the um, Ian's amazing trip trailer, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, if you needed to cut some bits out, then you'd have to manually go and fix that, um, which is obviously time consuming and you know very yeah. painstaking. Very very painstaking. Yeah. And yeah. It, it's like there are sort of I, I kind of um, <clears throat> evolved ways to make it quicker, but it's still not as much fun um, <laughs> as doing it automatically. So yeah. that's this is where the ducking thing comes in really handy. So as you can see, we've got um, here's our all of our dialogue, uh, which has been tagged as dialogue, and we've brightened it up and we've made it sound amazing. And here's our music on a different on a different um, audio layer. So I've tagged that as music, and now we have the ducking. If I turn that on over here, it's asking me to duck against. So you can, it's looking at whatever else in your timeline has been tagged, whether it's music or sound effects or ambience. Um, and then we have these controls here. We're just going to use the defaults for the time being. And what I want you to watch is this line here, which is the an indication of the volume right now. So if I print, generate keyframes, it has a look through, it thinks about it, and it's automatically dropped in keyframes. So it's dropping the volume before the audio starts, before the dialogue starts. And then it brings it back up again, and it's just automatically dropped those in. So if we play it back now, you can hear the difference. And I also have this camera over here. So... That's very good. <laughs> Ducking at the click of a button. It's incredible. And then so if the, the client sort of says, okay, I want, you know, the, it, it's going a little bit too quiet. I would rather hear more of the music and less of your yeah. voice. I'll be like, okay, fine. I suppose I understand. Um, I can <laughs> change the duck amount here. So we could say uh, duck it to minus eight instead of minus 18. And then this is how fast we want it to, to fade in and out. So, so you can adjust I, that as well. That's great. Yeah. So you, once I click generate keyframes, you'll see, I'll just zoom in a little bit for you. So right now, that uh, the line between these two points is quite shallow. So it would mean it's yeah. taking a little while to get from low volume to high volume. If now that I've changed the fades into something a lot faster, 218 milliseconds to be precise, and then press generate keyframes, you can see now it's really fast. So it'll fade out quickly and it'll fade up quickly. And I also have this camera over here. I'll do my best. So for such a high octane trailer, mm. I prefer <laughs> this uh, version here. Um, so yeah, very, very powerful, very uh, quick and easy and convenient. It means that you can um, 
concentrate on the edit rather than faffing about with uh, ducking. That's awesome. That's really yeah. good. Yeah. Um, would you be able to show an example if you had to remove a piece of footage? Yep. Um, and then how the ducking then uh, regenerates, you can regenerate the keyframes from that? For sure. So say you're the client and you've just said, yeah. all right, look, um, I love it. It just goes on a bit long. Like, Make it shorter. I suppose. <laughs> I suppose you're right. Yes. Okay, fine. I'm just going to drag over those, delete those. Uh, you know, what I'll do is I'm just going to copy one of these um, cool transitions first so I can paste it back in. I'm okay. going to delete that. I'm just going to drag over there, move it back up. I've got snapping turned on, so it butts up against, it automatically shows me when I'm butting up against the next clip. Awesome. I'm going to click in between here and paste my transition back on, which was that kind of the sweet uh, yeah. light leaks effect. And all of the keyframes are, as you will have anticipated, in their original positions, which is not what we want. So mm. because the settings are all the same, I just have to drag over or click on the music again. All of this is identical and then hit generate keyframes. And, and it just adjust. So that's it. That's, that's all you need to do. Okay. And then brilliant. the final, uh, the icing on the cake is I'm just going to go into the um, effects uh, palette and drag, um, I've typed in expo because I know that I'm looking for exponential fade and I'm just going to drag yeah. that down onto the end here. And so that's not using keyframes, it's just an effect, um, but it means that it'll fade out the music at the end so that when we go through, oh. well, we need to see, we need to actually see what we're looking at. So let's get that. Who knew jellyfish could be so dramatic? <laughs> Not Imagine me. seeing that on the big screen. <laughs> <laughs> Electrifying, like electrifying, stinging. So there you have it. Um, audio ducking is uh, such a great, such a great feature. It's um, incredibly uh, quick and easy. So yeah, I think I think is that kind of. Um, if if you've got any questions about essential sound. Um, mm. Hit me up. Yeah, definitely. I think um, I think that was very, very powerful. It's something that you know we've seen a lot of with with some of our customers in in terms of you know how do we do things a lot faster? We want to get mm. get to the finish line quicker. You know, what are some of these things that will help us get there? And when Premiere, sometimes when people use Premiere, they're not really sure on how to do these little tips and tricks. So mm. something like that is is definitely a time saver, which is fantastic fantastic um you've you've reminded me of our, of our, the next little thing that i want to show you which is a little tip and trick which i've found incredibly valuable um in my own <laughs> editing is um i'm calling it multi-cam trick but it's effectively it's a combination of the two things that we've just covered <clears throat> multi-cameras and audio uh or music tracks so Before you show that we've actually got a question sorry oh, to yep, cut yep. you off Ian. no go for um, it do we do you have to worry about copyright with with music how do you make sure you and your client are covered in that sense that's a great question um yeah. when when you're using uh adobe stock um i haven't looked at the the terms and conditions but you know if it's in that uh instance and you would need to kind of just make sure that it fits your what your purpose is but stock music has been designed for a purpose which is that it will be uh, distributed and shared and so usually people license stock that there's um, an understanding that you're going to put it on YouTube or, or what have you there yeah. can be a difference between um, distributing it online something like YouTube or Vimeo and a television commercial and so you could use um, you might download stock music and think this is great it's stock music and put it in a television ad and then get a letter from somebody saying like, well, you weren't covered for that usage. So yeah. you need to make sure that whatever you're using it for um, and it gets as, as you kind of, the larger the budget and the larger the potential audience, the more kind of uh, finely grained the details are. And so, you know, on a recent job, I had to tell the people, you know, 
exactly where it was, what territory it was going to be shown in. In this instance, it was Australia, exactly how long it was going to be and all of the channels that it was going to be seen on. So whether that's, you know, social media, Instagram and Facebook and so on, television mm. in a cinema or a corporate environment, um, board meetings or conferences, all that kind of stuff. Um, often people have simplified it to make it uh, as really easy as possible because they want people to use their music or, or footage or imagery and so on. But it's always a good idea to make sure that you are covered for whatever usage you're going to use it for so that you don't get uh, lawyers breathing down your neck. Yeah, absolutely. I think with Adobe Stock, they, um, uh, they've gone in with affiliations with some stock music companies. I think one of them is Epidemic Sound. Um, and their library is just incredible, extensive, uh, so many different forms and genres and moods, as you saw, angry. Um, yeah, some, some really great uh, footage, yeah, sorry, audio in, in Adobe Stock itself. Yeah, um, sound effects as well, right? Like you've got, you've got a whole oh, bunch yeah. of sound effects, yeah. all sorts of things in there. Um, so, yeah, to, to come back to the multi-camera trick. So <laughs> if we had a client um, and the client is, you know, it could be, uh, you know, 14, 500 client, could be your mum, who knows. But if you've got a client and you want to trial different kinds of music for the trailer, this little trick is going to make that really easy. And I've used it a number of times. Mm. So I'm just going to make a brand new uh, sequence. And we'll call that, uh, we'll just call it music options. So in here, completely empty, I'm going to go back to the central sound into the browse tab. Um, now let's say, let's say angry wasn't the mood we were going for. Um, I kind of like dreamy. That sounds pretty good. Um, yeah. Limitless. Oh, sad. Okay, maybe not vapor. So, there you go. okay, that's great. Bit, bit trip hoppy. We'll drag that in there on uh, one. And now, what about dynamic um, corporate uplifting? That was one that was sort of wanted to try it before. It's going to turn off timeline sync so that I can preview it without having to hear the timeline. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Okay. You're otherwise, in it'd be, otherwise, it'd be mixing it, right? Mixing it would be sounds. it would be playing yeah. both. Yeah, exactly. So we, we don't want that. So um, what you're doing is you're putting a, a number of audio uh, pieces of music on here. I'm curious to see what you're about to do. Well, stay tuned, Chris, because <laughs> this this is going to absolutely blow your mind. So it was basically okay. I'm just going to I'm going to drag all of those automatically, uh, downloaded them and chuck them on the timeline. Uh, so this is the one that we call music options. And now I'll go back into uh, da, 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 essential sound demo. And I'm just going to delete the one that we had in there. And then I'm going to bring music options that we just created and drag that in wow. here. Uh, now, what I don't want is um, I don't want the video component. So I'm just going to turn off source patching for video. I will just have A1 turned on here. And, and, and why do you do that? Why are you doing that? So right now... Um, when if i've got uh v1 turned on then when i drag that one second i'll just get back to where we were oh i see it, so it, if it i drag it's... music options on there you can see that it's bringing in the video and the audio on the track that we just created even though there's no video in it it, it doesn't know that we we're not interested in that so it's just yeah. obliterated all of the uh, vision on my timeline so i'm going to hit undo i'll turn off v1 just by tapping that clicking on that and now just when I drag you know, it, we got five minutes to go. Okay, cool. So just drag that in there. And now it's, it's come in. Um, if I play that back, it's going to be an awful sort of medley of everything. Oh, that's horrible. That so, sounds interesting. Yeah, interesting. So what I want to do is right click on it and turn on multi-camera. So now ah. it's only going to play that's playing track one if i select that and press two on my keyboard now it's the track two and i can switch that in real time and the nice thing about this is once i go into my central sound panel and label that as music i can use ducking on it generate the keyframes wow. and now <laughs> i can i can change the audio and I also have this and camera respects, over here. Respects 
the ducking would be my best, no matter which so, track because I... So multi-camera doesn't just work with video, it works with audio as well. Yeah, multi-camera is, is kind of, you could put um, any asset that Premiere yeah. uses. <clears throat> and so you could even have different overlays for, um, and I've used it for using different um, languages. So I've had um, videos oh, where they've had uh, yeah. like um, Japanese, Chinese um, subtitles yeah. and English. And so I can just switch between them. You can make edits and then switch it render it all out as as the various kind of things and so there's a, a huge time saver so if you're willing to get a little bit creative then multi-camera can there's a whole wealth of uh, ways that you can use it that you can put it to a good use yeah that's that's really that's that's a great tip you definitely did blow my mind because i've never seen that before i've never seen multi-cam used that way and it's it's a really cool way of you know, sh perhaps showcasing this to a client or a customer and saying, hey, well, you know, what about this type of music? Does it fit with this uh, video and then so forth? You can just switch between them and then that way you can choose which one you need. It's only, it's usually, you know, it's only someone who knows Premiere a little bit who realizes that that's a cool trick because, you know, I show clients and their minds are definitely not blown. They're just like, <laughs> yeah, cool. I've seen yeah, cool. I want before. that one. I want yeah. that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want, I want corporate uplifting. So, and that's, and that's just fine. Um, they are corporate. So, um, but basically that was kind of that multi-camera trick, which I just think is um, a, a really, really fun way of using it that perhaps, you know, it wasn't originally intended for, but, you know, there is, mm. it gives you so many different options. Um, so I think we, how much longer do we have, Chris? Um, I think we've got just under a couple of minutes to go. Let me just clarify here one second. We've got about three minutes or so. I reckon, do you reckon we've got time for a quick um, transcription? Yeah. Yeah. So this was a new feature in um, the, the latest version of Premiere, which is uh, also, I find, a bit mind-blowing. Um, and so if you've got, in this instance, this is one I've set up, um, this is one I prepared earlier, uh, <laughs> which is effectively you, I've just dropped in, there's no music or anything, I've just dropped in a segment of myself and with nothing selected in there, I went up to the sequence menu and I went down to auto transcribe sequence. And this ran through all of the audio and in, uh, obviously I was uh, speaking English at the time, but you can get it to do other languages, I believe. It's made a couple of little errors, but that's perfectly understandable because you're using Which you can it's like edit, right? machine. Yeah. It's like artificial intelligence, really. Yeah. But it did an incredibly good job. Like I was kind of blown away with how so accurate it was. So you didn't type this in. This is this is Premiere, that, basically. That is just, yeah. So it takes your audio, it sends it to um, Adobe's artificial intelligence cloud service and comes back with the text. And one of the miraculous things about this is when, when I click on a word or a phrase here, it automatically jumps the to playhead in the timeline. In the timeline. Yeah, so right. if you've got a lot of like, you know, an hour long interview, you can just scan through, look for particular words. And so I can type in a word in here and it'll, it'll jump between them. Um, and awesome. you can just jump the, the play. So it's a massive time saver. And then yeah, I this automatically is new. This is yes. new in Premiere. I think it came out in, in one of the previous updates this year. Yeah, yep. I think it's this version. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. Cool. It's, it's, it, was, it was like a real, it's going to be a real game changer. And it's automatically, I got it to automatically generate these, um, the captions up here as well. So if I, if I delete this track, which is my caption track, um, you can see I've got create new caption track. Click on that. I've already set up a, a style down here, which is um, mm -hmm. my corporate style, and then hit OK. And it's one minute to go, gonna... just letting you right. know. <laughs> yep, no worries. Well, it didn't work that time because <laughs> obviously I've done something wrong, but effectively, in a nutshell, the transcription feature is amazing. And if you've got the latest version, I urge you to say something into your computer and give it a, give it a go because it's incredible. Say something into your computer, definitely. No, that's that's fantastic. Um, Ian, thank you so much for your time uh, over the last two couple of days that we've done. Your breadth of knowledge is incredible. What you've shown us is 
is fantastic. There's definitely, I oh know, stop it. There's definitely <laughs> some some tips in there that I, I, I'm going to use and, and you know, show our customers as well, which is fantastic. Um, anything else you wanted to say? I think we were looking at some other areas that perhaps we might do a future session on. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would lo love to show people um, some text animators. We ran out of time for that one, but this, that's a really fascinating subject. That's after effects one. Um, I'd also invite people to come and check out my YouTube channel because um, I've got a few more tutorials and bits and pieces up there and I'm, I'm cool. aiming to add more content um, as well. So I think there's a link to that in the chat perhaps. But um, yeah, thanks for, thanks for the opportunity. Awesome. It's always good to come and have a chat with Adobe about this stuff. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Hope you're well. See you later. Bye-bye.